your book seems to support the theory uh, that has been put out by Republicans that Nancy Pelosi and her staff chose political optics over protecting the Capitol in the days running up to January 6th. Where is the proof that they were behind not allowing the National Guard to come? Well, I think you can look at it from a couple different aspects. One, when I went to ask for the National Guard on Sunday, January 3rd, uh, it was her, Sergeant at Arms, um, Paul Irving, that denied the initial request, citing a concern for optics. Uh, I think there was a well-known concern that she had referred to uh, federal agents and National Guard on city streets during the 2020 protests as stormtroopers. So I think that was some of his concern uh, associated with that. And then you also got to look at the oversight structure that they had in place for the Capitol Police. One, I'm the only police um, chief that I'm aware of in the United States of America that has a federal law preventing preventing me from calling in federal resources both before an event and also while I'm you know, facing an emergency like I faced on January 6th. Those are laws put in place and voted on by Congress. And also when you think of the oversight put in place for the Capitol Police, it's political oversight that reports to political parties within uh, Congress. No matter how you cut it, when your oversight of a police department is, is reporting to a political party, that's a recipe for disaster. This is so explosive, uh, the, the accusation that you make an allegation in the book. Uh, that this was Speaker Pelosi acting politically. We reported on this back in December as well, uh, that, this, that this is what you said uh, that she did. I go back to this question. Uh, what, what is the real proof that she knew that the National Guard was asked for by the Capitol Police, by you, before January 6th? The, the proof that she, she was aware... Um, you know, again, that have to go into statements or testimony from Paul Irving, his possibly his phone records, which I think have have not been released so far, uh, that would relate to uh, my going in Sunday morning, January 3rd, requesting the National Guard. Uh, I think when I talk about it and, you know, I'd written it and it was in the book well before uh, Mike Stinger's passing. When I went and talked to Mike Stinger and said, hey, my, you know, uh, Mr. Stinger, or Mike, um, and I asked about, you know, when I went to go see him on January 3rd, he so quickly turned around and asked for me to call the uh, director, the uh, commanding general of the National Guard. It made me think he had some heads up I was coming. When I asked him about that, he specifically said Paul Irving had called him in advance of me arriving, said Sund is coming. He came to my office asking for the National Guard. Speaker Pelosi is never going to go for that. We have to come up with another idea. Um, that was something he said right off the bat. And, you know, Mike, you know, he's a, he, he, you know, he's an operational person, but it, for him to come up with that idea that quickly, he had to have some advanced knowledge that it was coming, coming by. But also, on January 6th, when you think about the fact, 71 minutes, 71 agonizing minutes, I had to wait to get approval from Paul Irving to call the, the National Guard. That right there should tell you something. There are going to be records that will indicate what communications he's having back to leadership. Because I think in some of his testimony, he even said he wanted to make sure leadership was, was aware or staff was aware that that he was bringing in the National Guard. Not that he thought he needed their approval, but he wanted to make sure they're aware. You know, that right there, 71 minutes while my men and women are fighting for their lives, that's, that's yeah, unacceptable. No, and, and look, and every second does count uh, in a situation like that. As you pointed out, people were fighting for their lives. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.